The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship at First English. A special welcome to those who are visiting today. You're always welcome at First English. Welcome to those joining, uh, listening uh, on the radio or watching Facebook Live or watching uh, um, a later broadcast on YouTube. All children are welcome at Sunday School this Sunday. More information uh, at the Sunday School table on this side of the building in the back of us or to your front. Everyone is welcome for coffee and fellowship in the dining room downstairs uh, after worship. We mark the season of Lent with Wednesday worship this Wednesday at six o'clock with Holden Evening Prayer and a preaching series called Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Spirit. Uh, this week, a potato bar will be served in the dining room by the youth going to the ELCA youth gathering in New Orleans later this summer. Uh, that begins at five o'clock and all are welcome. The Lenten mission focus is the Food Shelf Challenge. Uh, the goal is to raise $5,000 over two months. 75% uh, of the funds raised will go to the Faribault Community Action Center's food market, and 25% of funds raised will be sent to the ELCA World Hunger, which is in its 50th year this year. Uh, the, the center aisle is pulling away with it. Uh, um, the competition goes through Easter Sunday. Uh, if you write a check, or give cash, indicate which section that you're giving uh, towards. We thank you for your generosity and for helping our neighbors and extending God's love in this way. Exploring spiritual practices this week is gathered in the word, prayer, and meditation using scripture. All are welcome on Thursday, uh, March 14th at 6.30 in, the, in Fellowship Hall. Help beautify the sanctuary for Easter by ordering an Easter lily. Uh, the order forms are pink half sheets. They're found in the resource rack in the front entry. Deadline for ordering is March 24th. The First English Youth are selling spring flowers. You can order from a youth this morning in the narthex after worship, or you can stop by the church office. Uh, orders are due and payment by March 25th. The youth and family team are sponsoring Bingo Night this Saturday, March 16th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in the dining room. Everyone is welcome. Popcorn and lemonade will be provided. You can bring your own snacks and dinner. And finally, Holy Communion will be shared next Saturday uh, at 5 p.m. and next Sunday at 9 o'clock at the 9 o'clock service. And a baptism preparation session will be held next Sunday uh, March 17th after worship in Fellowship Hall. You can sign up in the church office. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We hold grudges in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is, O Christ, Our Hope.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, have mercy, O Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, have mercy, Lord have mercy, have mercy, O Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, O God. Amen. Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
first lesson is from Numbers 21. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Miserable food. Then the Lord sent po poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins which you have once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through trespasses, and made us alive again with Christ, by grace we have been saved, and raised up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> according to John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light 
so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. To begin, I feel like we all need to say a congratulations to ourselves for being here on Daylight Savings. An hour early, my kiddo was not excited to wake up, but we all made it. And if anyone comes for the sending hymn, we'll welcome them as well. So I am not a f American football fan, um, much to, I think, um, my brother's disappointments. I enjoy baseball and hockey. I, I love soccer. There are many sports that I can get into. I just, I never have gotten into football. The only time I remember even having any interest in it was when my cousin, who's a couple years younger than me, got really into the Green Bay Packers. And as someone from Minnesota, I felt it was my duty to just become a Vikings fan. <laughs> So when she got a Green Bay Packers scrunchie, I got a Vikings one. When she got a Green Bay Packers jersey, I got a Vikings one, just to make sure we knew where our allegiances were. But I've never been much of a football fan because I just don't understand like the competition of it all and the intense rivalries that happen and how that supposedly brings people together. I worked um, at a previous call with some pretty ardent Green Bay Packers fans who were also the type that were like, well, Minnesota's not our actual rivalry, the Chicago Bears are. And I was like, I can't even handle any of this conversation. I don't want to talk about it. There's these intense rivalries that happened, and so I just, I never really got into it. I didn't understand it. So if anyone is keeping an apocalypse bingo card, you can check off the fact that I'm going to talk about football in a sermon. Because, of, because I've never really paid attention to the Super Bowl, I never know who's actually in it, until last year. Because Kansas City was facing the Philadelphia Eagles, which I think was last year. <laughs> But the reason I enjoyed that game or I paid attention to it was because there were, there were brothers playing each other. Travis Kelsey plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jason Kelsey recently retired but played for the Philadelphia Eagles. And lo and behold, they found themselves facing each other in the Super Bowl. After a season of competition, they had found themselves rivaling against each other. And so I found it very interesting to have these two brothers working hard, playing in this game that meant so much to them, and being against one another. My personal favorite part of this was that their mother, who has come to be known as Mama Kelsey, wore a custom jacket that had half Kansas City Chiefs and half Philadelphia Eagles on it, which made a lot of sense to me, because she was there obviously supporting both of her children. And um, it was interesting to me as well because these two brothers had started a podcast called New Heights, which I do listen to, though I skip over all the football talk, because it's interesting to hear them talk to each other, as I think all siblings are interesting with each other. But they talked about football and all of the things. And one episode, they talked about the end of the Super Bowl, in which Travis's team won, as ultimately one of them was going to. Now, there were many reports about what Jason, the losing brother, said to Travis at the end. But as they had talked about it, they, Jason said, I went up to you, I hugged you, I said congratulations, and I told you to go celebrate with your team because I don't want you feeling bad for me. At the end of that game, you could see the disappointment that Jason had. You could see the sadness that he had for not winning the Super Bowl, as is every football team's goal. But in a moment, you can also see, if you watch the, if you watch the end of the game, you can see him see Travis and his face changes, and he smiles and pulls him into a hug. I think that game was so compelling to me because it was this juxtaposition of the loyalty you have for family, the love that you have as siblings, and the allegiance you have to your football team. 
And in the end, I think Jason and Travis showed us that ultimately their brotherhood is what matters to them the most. That though they play on opposing teams and they worked hard and they tried to defeat each other in that game for sure, they also remembered who they were and their brotherhood. In fact, Travis said that the fa his most favorite part of that season was actually just getting to talk to Jason every week about football on their podcast. The, the gospel reading we had today features one of the most famous verses, I think. It's a verse that is held up at football games or is memorized by our kids at camps. It's known to all of us, perhaps. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. I think this verse is a beautiful summary of our Christian faith. It tells us that God loves this world so much that God sent Jesus, that God put on this flesh space suit and met the world in a new way that God no longer could be separated in such a way, but instead stepped into our very human existence, gathered together friends, ate with people, enjoyed one another's company, and ultimately died a human death, only to overcome it in the resurrection. This is a beautiful verse, and so it makes sense that it would be memorized and said often. But sometimes I think this verse trips me up when it's simply said as itself, because it sounds exclusionary. It sounds like we have to suddenly pick what football team we're on. It feels like suddenly we have to, we have to be on one side of the world. That we have to be on the everyone who believes in him, and we have to hold on to that well, because that's the only way that we'll have eternal life is in our belief. But I think we need to also read the verses around it. We need to remember the context that it's in, and we need to remember the God that we worship and the God who loves us overwhelmingly and fully. After all, the verse right after it says, Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now, whenever condemnation is is said, I think it gets a little scary. But I like the reminder that the only thing that has the word eternal with it in this passage is life. There is no eternal condemnation spoken of in this passage, only the gift of eternal life. This is what God gives to the world. Now we go on in this passage to learn more about what God calls us to be and who God calls us to be. And I think one of the ways that God changed this world and continues to change our world is that Jesus exposes what we are doing to one another. Jesus sheds light, as you will, on our human experience and what is going on in the world. Verse 19 tells us, this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. I think this is telling us, it's showing us our world, the way that our world is unfair, the way that we have allowed the few to take advantage of the many, the ways that some people prefer to work in shadier ways so that they can get ahead rather than taking everyone with them. After all, sin is real in this world. We do mess up. We do hurt one another. War exists. And so we have to deal with the fact that there is darkness, there is evil in this world. But we do also get the reminder that there is light in this world. And yes, there are those who, do, who love the darkness, those who are taking advantage of others not seeing what they are doing, but there is also light that will justifiably expose them. 
they are, there are ways in this world that are unfair, and God calls us to care for the widow, the orphan, and the alien, but sometimes we're just not so good at that. After all, I think we've all done things in this world and in our lives that we'd prefer to be left in the darkness, to not come to light. Indeed, there is darkness and light in all of us. But this is what Jesus does. Jesus shows us what we are doing and how it is affecting us and the world around us and the people around us. And God sheds light on the situation so that we can come to truth and to hope and to love. After all, darkness isn't even really like a thing. It's just the absence of light. Jesus is the one who brings the light. And indeed, we learn this in the beginning of John's gospel when John writes, in him, God and Jesus was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There is darkness in this world, but it cannot overcome the light of God. After all, if this entire room, if this whole space were darkened, and there was one light, it would shine brilliantly. We may be left with a lot of darkness in our world, but it can never overcome the power of God and the light that God brings, the light that brings us life and love. I don't think these verses are a judgment between those who are in the dark and those who are in the light. After all, we both have dark and light in us. I don't think this is a judgment of Christian and non-Christian. I don't think this is a way to put us into categories and to help us know that we're going to be okay because we have a strong enough whatever. I think this is showing that Jesus exposes the darkness in our world so that we can come out and live in the light. That evil cannot be overcome. But that evil cannot overcome God that God cannot be overcome by evil. And this is not an easy thing. It's not easy to suddenly have what you have been doing if it hasn't been very helpful or truthful be exposed, but it is a holy thing. When we are shown the injustices in our world, we can step up and help. When we are shown the lies, we can expose the truth. When we see the evil in our world, we can combat it with God's love. I think sometimes we can get so lost in judgment and in competition with others. We focus on the allegiance we have to our football team, to our political party, to our coffee preferences, to our understanding of whether a hot dog is a sandwich or whether cereal is a soup, that we can forget about the ways that we are siblings to one another, that we forget about the ways that light and love surround and envelop us all, regardless of the ways that others describe us, regardless of the ways that we describe ourselves, regardless of any lines that are drawn between us, we know that God calls us all children. We know that God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we are dead through our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. We know that it is grace that has saved us, not anything that we have done, but by the gift of God. We know that there is darkness and light in our world, and that God is ever bringing more light. After all, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. The world. The whole thing. Not just the Kansas City Chiefs or the Philadelphia Eagles. Not just Super Bowl winners. Not just America. Not just where Jesus walked around in Israel and Palestine. Not just anything. God isn't exclusionary. God loves the world and all in it. God's love may look different, but God loves. End of sentence. We will sing in just a few moments our hymn of the day, which is Just As I Am Without One Plea. 
And the last verse says, just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yeah, thine alone, I come, I come. Through Jesus and through love and light, God breaks down every barrier that we set between us, every competition that we create, every division that we have, and reminds us who we are, that we are beloved, that God loves us even when we are dead in sin, and that together we form the body of Christ. So may we remember that we are all siblings in the family of God. May we not draw lines, but cross them in love. May we strive not to judge, but leave that up to God. May we remember that no matter how dark it feels, the darkness does not overcome light. May we continue to have hope that that light will expose love and truth in this world. And may we not settle for the categories that divide us, but remember that we are truly one. Amen.
we confess our faith, faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church creation and a world in need. Let us pray. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the church here in Faribault, in the United States, around the world, and encourage cooperation and partnership for the sake of your mission. We pray for interreligious understanding and respectful ecumenical dialogue that your church is a sanctuary for those in need of protection and care. Lord, in your mercy. We praise you, God, for the earth and all of creation. Make us good stewards of land, water, air, and all living things. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who witness to your liberating love through the words and actions of policymakers, civic and community leaders, church leaders, and through each of us, work to free all people from racism, discrimination, and hatred. Lord, in your mercy. God, your love brings healing and wholeness, strengthen and give restored health to those who are sick or recovering from injury, those who have ongoing health concerns, including Diane Larson, Jean Larson, and Lynn Nelson. Give peace and comfort to Ruth McCormick. Be near to others whom we name now before you silently. Strengthen and encourage health care workers, first responders, and caregivers. Lord, in your mercy. God, your love enlightens our lives. During this season of Lent, open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of your grace, forgiveness, and mercy. Deepen our love for you and for our neighbors. Teach us to pray for our enemies and give us and all people the blessing of hope and joy. Lord, in your mercy. We remember today with thanksgiving our loved ones who have died and who are at rest in your care. Bless those who mourn today. Renew them and all of us in faith with the promise of your love and care that is never ending. Lord, in your mercy. God of grace, receive these prayers and the prayers of our hearts and continue to accompany us on our journeys through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Worship continues with the offering.
Let us pray together. Jesus, you are our source of life and have brought to us all good things. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Give us a hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy and fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is, O God of mercy, God of light. We go in peace to share God's love. Thanks be to God.